Sometime not very long ago, our elections were manual. A voter filled out a ballot by hand, and because códigos were not allowed in the voting booth, which wasn't much of a booth, by the way, you would have to remember the names of those you wanted to vote for. And that was an especially tall order during national elections. You would vote for a president, vice president, 12 senators, a party list group, a congressman, a governor, a vice governor, anywhere between 6 to 14 provincial board members, a mayor, vice mayor, eight city or municipal councillors, a total of 30 plus names. Just trying to remember 12 names for senator is a big thing. In the 2001 election, Namfrel noticed that voters would fill up their ballots with only seven to eight names of senatorial candidates. In 1987, voters needed to remember 24 names. A new constitution then had resurrected a bicameral legislature requiring the election of 24 senators. After voting, you take your ballot and slide it into a yellow, beat-up, rusty ballot box that had seen better years, if not decades. At 3 p.m., the polls close and the three teachers who compose the Board of Election Inspectors open up the ballot box and begin the counting. One teacher reads out the names written on each ballot. Another records the votes on the tally board, a spreadsheet as big as a manila paper that's taped onto the blackboard. More often than not, though, there is more than one tally board, especially if there are many candidates. And of course, the votes are recorded on the tally boards by hands, by taras, like this. One, two, three, four, five. From the tally board, the votes are transposed by hand onto the election returns. Remember that each ballot contains an average of 30 plus names. So if the BEI spent 10 minutes on each ballot, then you can imagine how long it took for an average of 200 ballots. After finishing reading the ballots, the votes for each candidate are added up. The election return is submitted to a municipal or city board of canvassers, which prepares its own certificate of canvas and statement of votes. And here, human intervention of a dangerous kind begins. And uh, all the forms are transposed several times from the precinct to the uh, municipality, municipality to the province and province to national. Uh, that's all done manually, either handwritten or typewritten mm -hmm. uh, and, and transposed from one piece of paper to another. Yeah. So numbers can change yeah. as you move up from, from one piece of paper to yeah. the other. This is St. Benil's Gym here in LaSalle Green Hills. This served as Namfrel's headquarters and Operation Quick Count Center through several elections. And this is where Namfrel discovered many election irregularities. Namfrel was given one of seven copies of the election returns that came from the precincts and one of seven copies of the municipal, city, and provincial certificates of canvas and statements of votes. But Namfrel didn't just count what was given to them, they also checked if the math was correct. It was during the 1995 and 1998 elections that the term Dagdagbawas first emerged. To add to a candidate's votes, Dagdag, one would have to deduct from another candidate's votes, Bawas. In 1998, Namfrel flagged an election return from a precinct in Marikina. A candidate had five votes in one column and two votes in another. The total should have been seven. But the votes in words read 5-2. And in numbers, the Board of Election Inspectors wrote on the election return 52. Remember that, that by the time they do this at the election return level in the precinct, uh, they have already worked a full day uh, administering the voting. Mm -hmm. Retail, that's what it was. Small fry. Wait till it got to the municipal, city, or provincial board of canvassers. 